Hi, I'm Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to learn several ways to enhance our images by using exposure and contrast while referencing the histogram in Lightroom Classic. I want to start off with a reminder that none of the changes that we make in Lightroom Classic are permanent. They can be refined as many times as needed without losing any image quality, so feel free to explore. And you can choose the order in which you want to change the settings. There is no right or wrong order in which you can change them. Okay, let's begin with the histogram. So the histogram displays a visual representation of all of the pixel values in an image plotted from black on the left to white on the right. The height of the column shows how many pixels in the image have that value. Now, as we make changes to our images, it's good to reference the histogram to make sure that you aren't pushing important details in an image's highlights or shadows to areas of pure white or pure black without detail, unless you have reason to do so. The histogram is going to vary from image to image. If you have a low key image like this one, then most of the values in the histogram are going to fall on the left hand side. If we select another image like this one, which is very high key, then most of the values on the histogram are going to fall on the right hand side. And if you have an image like this, where you have more mid-tone values than highlights and shadows, then the histogram is going to look like this. So there's no such thing as a perfect histogram. Each histogram is just a visual representation of all of the values in your image. Now we're going to take a look at two images and see how we can use the tone sliders in the basic panel to enhance the photo. So this first image is properly exposed. There is detail in the highlights and I can see that in the histogram. But because it was taken at sunrise, there isn't a lot of contrast and the dynamic range doesn't extend to pure black. In fact, there are no values in the darker areas of the histogram. Let's start by clicking on the auto button. Lightroom will analyze the image and make an auto adjustment to all of the tone values as well as some of the values under presence the vibrance and saturation values. We can see that it's extended the dynamic range, but we still don't have a true black, nor do we have a true white. So I'm going to use Command Z on Mac, Control Z on Windows in order to undo that auto change so that we can do it manually with a little bit more control. So for all of the sliders in the tone area, moving the slider to the left will make the image darker and moving it to the right will make the image lighter. Double clicking on the tick mark for the slider will reset a slider. Now some people prefer to start with exposure and contrast, but personally I like to set the white and the black points first. Now as I move the white slider to the right, we can watch in the histogram that all of the values on the very right side start getting pushed up against the right hand side of the histogram. Fortunately, we can see what values are going to be clipped by enabling the clipping warnings. Here I'll click on the show highlight clipping icon and we see a red overlay in the image area wherever I've clipped my highlights to pure white. So using the white slider, I'll just back off on that until I don't see any clipping. I don't want to clip my highlights to pure white, especially if I'm printing because our eyes are sensitive to patterns and will notice that there is no ink in the clipped area. As I move my black slider to the left, if I want to see what I'm pushing to pure black, I can toggle on the clipping warning for my shadows. Now we can see everywhere that is pure black without detail is overlaid with a blue highlight. So again, I'd want to back off on that if I wanted to see details in my shadows. Now I'd like to see a little bit more information in my shadows, so I'll move the shadow sliders to the right in order to lighten them and I'll bring my highlights down so that I see a little bit more information in the brighter areas of my image. Then I can decide whether I want to decrease or increase the exposure and whether I want to increase or decrease the amount of contrast. All right, if I want to see a quick before and after, I can tap the YY icon. We see the before on the left and the after on the right. I can also tap the keyboard shortcut Y in order to toggle that off. If I want to see a full size preview, I can use the backslash key to toggle to before and tap it again for after. 
All right, let's move to the next image. And in this situation, I actually have too much contrast in the image and I want to get rid of some of it. I could start with auto to get an idea of what that might look like. Then I'll use command Z or control Z to undo that. And we'll use the tone sliders. Here I see a little bit of blue in the shadow area. So I'm gonna move the blacks to the right a bit. I'm also going to increase my shadows to reveal the details in those shadow areas. I'll increase my whites, referencing the histogram and making sure that I don't go too far. I don't wanna see those red overlays because that means I've clipped those values to pure white. So I'll back off on that. Then I'll move the highlight slider to the left and you can see, especially in the blue water, how I can gain more information in those lighter areas. All right, let's move the exposure up just a wee bit. And I'm going to decrease the contrast, giving it a little bit softer lighting. We can also change values using the histogram. As I position my cursor over the histogram, we can see below it that it says blacks, shadows, exposure, highlights, and whites. If I click and then drag within that histogram, we can see that I'm actually moving the corresponding slider, in this case exposure, in the tone area. Let's use that backslash key to see a quick before and then after. And in order to turn off those clipping warnings, we can click on either one of the icons or tap the J key to toggle both of them on or off at once. Okay, one last shortcut before we wrap up. If I want to set my black point and my white point to the same location that Lightroom Classic would put it if I clicked auto, I can hold down this shift key and then double click on the blacks or double click on the whites to auto set them. Excellent, I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.